I've had an electric scooter for over three years now, and it's so much fun to ride. Sometimes I use it as an actual mode of transportation to get me to where I wanna go, and sometimes I just use it to ride around because it always puts a smile on my face. So when you asked me if I wanted to compare the KQI2 to the KQI3 Pro, I thought, uh, yeah. Definitely. I've had them both for a couple of months and this video will help you choose which one might be a better fit for you because they're definitely targeting different types of riders and thank you to New for sponsoring this video. Now, the first thing I noticed when unboxing both of them was the build quality. I mean, you're going to be standing on them, you're gonna be riding them pretty fast, making quick turns, you're gonna be hitting some bumps. So you definitely want a scooter that can handle the terrain. And in this case, it's a situation of good and better. The KQI2 is already noticeably more substantial than my previous e-scooter. The deck or the part that you stand on is wider, so it provides more space for your feet and it gives you better stability. And since the battery is under the deck, you're getting a lower center of gravity and a more steady ride. Now, take all of those things to the next level and you get the KQI3 Pro. So an even more substantial frame, an even wider deck. And overall, when you look at them side by side, it's obvious that the KQI3 Pro is a more premium model. The KQI2 actually has slightly larger pneumatic tires, but the 3 has wider ones, and in both cases, I was happy with the shock absorption and the grip. I live in Cleveland, and our roads are pretty terrible for some strange reason, so this was really important to me. Now, both handlebars are nice and wide and really makes the riding experience comfortable, especially when you ride for a long time. It also improves the handling and steering as you go into turns, as you go over bumps, or when you have to suddenly brake. And speaking of brakes, both models offer regenerative brakes, which I'll get to in just just a minute. The KQI2 has an integrated front drum brake, so there's one brake handle. The KQI3 actually has dual disc brakes, so there are two brake handles, one for the front and one for the back. Both models brake fast, and I haven't had any skids with either one, but personally, I prefer the KQI3 because the front and rear discs give it more even and smooth braking. Now, back to regenerative braking, you've probably heard about it with other e-vehicles, and these scooters can store the kinetic energy that's created during braking. In both cases, you get three levels, weak, medium, and strong, and it's an important choice because you're going to feel the difference as soon as you let off the accelerator. If you set it to weak, then the scooter will slowly roll to a stop and it will feel very natural. And this also means that you're storing the least amount of energy in the battery. If you set it to strong, then you'll feel the scooter braking much more quickly as soon as you let off the accelerator and you'll be storing more energy. And then of course, medium is right in the middle. I suggest testing out the three different levels and then seeing which one fits best with your particular riding style. I have mine set to medium most of the time. One of the most important differentiators between the two models is performance, and we wanna look at both speed and range. So the KQI2 has a top speed of 17.4 miles per hour versus 19.9 .9 miles per hour on the KQI3. We're looking at about a 2.5 mile per hour or four kilometer per hour difference. When it comes to range, again, we see that the KQI3 Pro comes out ahead with 31 miles or 50 kilometers, versus 24.9 miles or 40 kilometers on a KQI2. And this is a function of the motor power and the battery. So first of all, we're getting a 300 watt motor on a KQI2 versus 350 watts on a KQI3 Pro. You can actually feel the difference in the faster acceleration on the KQI3 Pro and the fact that it's better at handling steeper hills. I said this in the beginning, but I have a smile on my face Every time I ride these, they're both super fun and this additional performance is just a bonus. When it comes to battery life, we're getting a higher capacity battery on a KQI3 Pro, which is something that I welcome with every device that requires charging. One thing that I was super curious about was the charging time. And we're looking at seven hours on the KQI2 versus six hours on the KQI3 Pro. In both cases, this is long enough where it's something that you're gonna wanna do overnight or while you're at work. The nice thing is that you don't have to worry about overcharging either one. The new incorporated 14 different types of battery protection to keep you going. Another aspect that was really important to me is safety. Christy and I ride these, our kids ride them, and then a lot of my friends want to try them out when they come over. And I'm glad the new thought this through. So first of all, there's a really bright halo light right below the handle. And 
This helps illuminate the road or path in front of you, and it also makes you super visible as it gets darker outside. There are also bright brake lights, there are side reflectors, which are great when you're going through intersection, and there's a mechanical bell in case you need to let others know that you're approaching. And overall, when it comes to safety, this is another area where I appreciate having the more sturdy build quality. When we look at the design of both scooters, we can see that new is targeting different types of riders with each product. It's almost like a small and ultra maneuverable car versus a luxury car. The KQI2 has a more minimalistic design. It's lighter, it's more portable, it has swappable grip tape for the deck so you can choose the one that best fits your style. And while it easily handles adult riders, it feels like it's designed for a younger audience, for students looking for convenient transportation, or just someone who wants to have fun with their commute. The KQI3 is more substantial. We already talked about the wider deck and the improved braking system. It's heavier, and because of that, the ride is less bumpy, it's more comfortable, more stable even with the higher speeds and the longer range. So I think it's a better fit for professionals and for power commuters who are looking for a more efficient ride to work and maybe wanna skip those high gas prices. Now I talked a little bit about the weight, so I wanna discuss portability. The KQI2 is slightly lighter at 40.6 pounds versus 44.75 pounds on the KQI3 Pro. When I first got these, I remember thinking like, whoa, these are bigger and heavier than my current scooter. And I was worried about how that would impact portability. So yes, they're a little less comfortable to carry than my old scooter, but what I gain in riding comfort, stability, and performance easily outweighs, you see what I did there, the slight inconvenience. Now, as far as size, both are the same length. The KQI3 is slightly taller when extended, but both fold down to the same height. So they're very easy to store and you should be able to fit them in the trunk of a car if that's something you need to do. When it comes to changing settings and controlling both scooters, you have two choices, either the integrated display and button or you can use the app. Now, some things like changing riding modes or switching on the brighter light, those are types of things that I do with the display. But I absolutely love the app because it's super easy to navigate. There's a settings section where I can name the vehicle, I can see and change all the settings, and I can even lock the scooter remotely. It can also do firmware updates right through the app. They're automatically detected and they're super easy to install. Two opportunities for improvements with future models would be a slightly brighter display to help in direct sunlight, there may be two more buttons for additional functionality outside of the app. Now, before I get to my actual recommendations, I wanna talk about the pricing because most of us are on a budget and both of these models are super fun to ride. So typically the KQI2 Pro retails for $599 and the KQI3 Pro is $799. But the link in the description is always updated with the most current specials. So check it out to see what discounts are available now. New has over two million worldwide users and it's available in 49 countries and I've been very happy with the performance of both models so far. The KQI2 has a clean and minimalistic design, good comfort and stability, swappable grip tape, it's available in white or gray, it's light, it's a great option for someone who wants premium safety features and reliability at a lower cost. The KQI3 is the more luxurious option. Mine is ultra black, it also comes in rose gold, has better performance in terms of range and speed, it's more comfortable to ride, and it has a more advanced braking system. So if you have the additional budget, it's an absolutely fantastic option. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.